chapters 5, 6 and 7 these chapters and the teachings in these chapters is often called the constitution of the kingdom Jesus teaches us how a citizen in his kingdom should live and today, in today's passage we see that Jesus teaches that the peacemakers are blessed and promises that they will be called sons of God that's the promise they will be called the sons of God we're going to learn two truths from this passage this morning two truths first of all God favors the peacemakers right that's what the Bible says God favors the peacemakers blessed are the peacemakers the Bible says and the word translated as blessed in Greek is makarios which can also be translated as favor God's favor is on those who are peacemakers now in the last message as we saw Jesus says blessed are the pure in heart right for they shall see God after speaking about the pure in heart our Lord speaks of the peacemakers since peacemakers are pure in heart they never make peace with sin some people make peace but they make peace with sin you know that's not what the Lord is talking about and also it's not the guileful but those who are pure and sincere that are peacemakers the guileful cannot be peacemakers but those who are pure in heart can be peacemakers those who battle sin in their lives and conquer sin can help those who have conflicts with others so all these beatitudes are connected now some Jews look forward to the time when God would help them to defeat the Romans and establish his kingdom and they thought that this Messiah would come and defeat the Romans through violent means however surprisingly Jesus teaches his disciples to be meek he says blessed are the meek and then he says blessed are the merciful not the ruthless and now he says blessed are the peacemakers and then in the last beatitude he says blessed are those who endure persecution you know very strange you know for the first century hearers all these teachings are very strange but you know Jesus' values as we said are counter countercultural and church note that Jesus doesn't say that peace lovers are blessed right you know it's not enough to love peace it takes effort to make peace loving peace is different from making peace some people even enjoy watching two people or two groups fighting with each other right so they can be peace lovers but still not make peace others ignore the serious issues and sweep these issues under the carpet but these issues can become more serious later but peacemakers wisely deal with situations that can bring divisiveness Jesus says that the peacemakers are blessed God favors the peacemakers and these peacemakers are not passive they actively work towards bringing peace here the Greek word for peace is Eirene which is an equivalent of the Hebrew word Shalom alright Shalom Shalom or Eirene doesn't merely mean an absence of trouble it doesn't merely mean an absence of trouble ARNA basically means enjoyment of everything good so when you are enjoying every good gift from God every good blessing from God that is ARNA that is Shalom and this beatitude recognizes that in this world there will be conflicts wars and injustice and as God's people we must make this world a better place to live for everyone that's what we are called to do God is a peacemaker church he is the author of peace 
when you read Isaiah 27 verse 5 it speaks of the theme of making peace with God you know first of all we got to make peace with God and then the Bible also says that we are reconciled to God and one another through Christ's sacrifice on the cross Colossians 1.20 says Colossians 1.20 and through him that is through Christ to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross so God has made peace with all creation including us through the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ also when we read Ephesians chapter 2 verses 15 to 16 Ephesians 2 15 to 16 the Bible says by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two that is Gentiles and Jews so making peace and might reconcile us both that is Gentiles and Jews to God in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility enmity so through the sacrifice of Jesus you know our enmity is broken enmity between Jews and Gentiles is are broken so through Christ's sacrifice we have peace with God and we also have peace with one another in Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 the Bible says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace Zechariah chapter 9 verses 9 to 10 says that the Messiah speaks peace to the nations that's why you know Jesus the Messiah came riding on a donkey on that Palm Sunday because he came to speak peace to the nations this Messiah the Lord Jesus Christ reconciles humans to God and to one another so we must be passionate to see people reconcile to God and one another because the Lord is passionate about it you know but peace doesn't come easily it's tough God made peace with us by paying the ultimate price he gave his only son so that we can have peace with God and with one another peace is never easy peace is never cheap it is always costly John Stott says that even we have to make peace through pain peace is always achieved through pain it doesn't come easily John Stott writes that when a conflict arises because of our mistake we have to make peace by experiencing the pain of apologizing when we make something wrong when we mess up you go and apologize it's not easy it's painful our ego hurts but then you humble yourself and you go and ask for forgiveness also he says when we try reconciling two parties we have to experience the pain of listening to them and freeing ourselves from prejudice preconceived notions listening to the viewpoints of both people or groups and taking a chance of being misunderstood because when you're a peacemaker there is a chance of you being misunderstood of taking sides so it's not easy it's it's pretty tough to make peace and Jesus makes a general statement he says blessed are the peacemakers he doesn't limit peacekeeping to only one kind but today I would like to share you know the way we can be keys peacekeepers rather in at least two ways we can be peacekeepers in several ways but let me share with you as to how we can be peacekeepers in at least two ways we must reconcile people to God by sharing the gospel that's how we can be peacemakers that's when we are blessed we must reconcile people to God by sharing the gospel you see God is holy and righteous and sinners cannot have a relationship with this holy God they cannot approach him they cannot stand before him sinners are enemies of God so as we share the gospel we are being peacemakers hallelujah we seek to reconcile sinners with God 
so when you and i share the gospel you know we are actually being peacemakers and we are blessed when we do that hallelujah it's always a blessing to share the gospel in second corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 21 the bible says that god has given us the ministry of reconciliation god has called us to reconcile people to himself and to one another that's the ministry that we have received and all of us have received this ministry you know we are called to reconcile people to god but you know what as we share the gospel we run the risk of being misunderstood and we get persecuted as a result of that as we see in the next beatitude when you share the gospel people will not say oh thank you so much for sharing the life giving message instead they will say you're converting you're doing this and that and they will beat you up they'll spit on you and they'll persecute you they'll put you in jail that's how the world is it cannot accept the truth when we share the gospel some people may be offended and persecutors still we must seek peace with all people even as we share the gospel we got to do it wisely and we have to still seek peace as we go and share the gospel so how can we be peacemakers by sharing the gospel and reconciling people to god and not only that of course as we all understand we must reconcile people with one another we must reconcile people with one another as we were studying this passage scholars say that peacemakers may be a reference to bringing peace during wars it could include even that peacemakers who bring peace during a war, during wars or a conflict between two people or groups you know it is said that in the last 3400 years humans have been at peace for only 268 years can you imagine that for the last 3400 years only 268 years did not see any wars otherwise wars have been constantly happening throughout human history and right now we are seeing war in between ukraine and russia i mean we thought it's a thing of the past but then it's happening right before our eyes in just the 20th century 108 million people that is 10 crores 80 lakh people were killed in wars in just the last century in the 1990s more than 2 million people more than 20 lakh children were killed due to wars and that's so heartbreaking when i read that figure it was so heartbreaking to listen uh, read that statistic think about that 20 lakh children just in the 1990s in one decade during a war civilians are bombed women are raped civilians are starved and they are forced to flee their homes you know when i think about ukraine you know so many you know thousands of people left their house and went as and they are living as refugees homeless people in another land i mean think about that you lost everything and you are just a mere refugee waiting for a morsel of bread for the next meal you see our world desperately needs peacemakers you see church keeping the peace is difficult maintaining peace is difficult it's even more difficult to bring peace where there is no peace only those who have peace with god can be true peacemakers we must be peacemakers in our homes in our churches and a community that's what god has called us to do we must not have a divisive spirit you see you know what we when we have a divisive spirit we imitate the devil we imitate the devil when we divide people and it's sad to see many churches divided over petty issues silly issues as god's people we must never cause any conflicts between people romans chapter 12 verse 
in Romans 12 18 Apostle Paul says this and I love this uh, passage it's so important if possible he says if possible so far as it depends on you live peaceably with all now why is he saying if possible because there are some people who are troublemakers they don't want peace they always want some fight or the other you know there are some people who are enemies of the gospel and they won't allow you to remain at peace right that's why he's saying if possible so far as it depends on you when it comes to you make sure that you live peaceably with all people that's what apostle paul is saying again when you read hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 the writer to hebrews says strive for peace with everyone what do we have to do strive it's not just about try he doesn't say try he says strive strive for peace with everyone around you James chapter 3 verses 17 to 18 important passage in this context would you open your Bibles or look up at James chapter 3 verses 17 to 18 Apostle James writes but the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable gentle open to reason full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere and he says a harvest and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace in other words righteousness cannot grow in disunity in discord when there is disunity there is no righteousness that comes out of it James says that those who make peace sow a harvest of righteousness when you make peace you're actually sowing a great harvest of righteousness of right living with God and with one another you see peacemaking is not just about solving problems it's about reconciling people to God and one another we can be peacemakers all of us can be we can be peacemakers by initiating reconciliation when others offend us we can go and tell gently you know I'm offended instead of some people putting things in their hearts for years and years together right as sister Stubbs was mentioning last week one brother said I didn't speak to my wife for one long year you know nothing to be proud about that right some people store up things and like a pressure cooker burst out one fine day and people cannot take that right so when you're offended initiate reconciliation by going and speaking to the person in a gentle manner and also we can be peacemakers by asking for forgiveness when we offend others that's how you become a peacemaker you see our efforts to make peace can often lead to persecution and trouble as we see in the next beatitude still we are called to be peacemakers still we are called to be peacemakers sometimes there will be conflicts in a church we did this while doing a Bible study in Philippians but when if you turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 we read about two women who were not in peace with each other they had some issue and this is what Apostle Paul writes to them Philippians 4 2 to 3 and by the way these letters were read publicly in the church I don't know how these two sisters felt when the you know when Paul's letter was read publicly but then you know it was a serious issue that's why Apostle Paul addressed this he says I entreat Euodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord this I also I ask you also true companion help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life you know within a church I mean this is not when we think about church conflicts it's not new I mean they happened in the early church when you read the read the story in the Corinthian church there were conflicts even in Jerusalem church when you read Acts 6 there were conflicts why because we are fallen people and fallen people make mistakes fallen people hurt each other here Apostle Paul pleads with two women to agree in the Lord you know he says agree in the Lord you don't have to agree about everything else but agree in the Lord 
because you are one family in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And their names are in the book of life. Both the sisters' names are in the book of life. And both of them worked along with Apostle Paul and labored for the gospel. And there is an issue between both of them. Paul says, deal with that. Deal with that. Don't put it under the carpet. We must actively seek to bring peace in the church. You know, divisions open door to the devil. When you read Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, the Bible says, you know, we should not be angry. We should not give place to anger, rather, because we open the door to the devil. Also, we lose out on the blessings of the community when there is no peace. When you read Psalm 133, the Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell in unity. And we lose out those blessings. The Bible says, There, wherever there is unity, there the blessing of God is there. And why do you think the churches are not flourishing today? Because there's so much of discord and disunity and people are coming and fighting on the streets, putting cases on one another. How do you expect God to bless those places when there is so much of discord? In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 11, we see that the believers in the Corinthian church were putting lawsuits against one another. So Paul rebukes them he rebukes them and he exhorts them to appoint wise people among themselves to settle their disputes. He says, don't you have wise people among you? Why do you have to go to the world and put cases against one another? Come on. That's what Apostle Paul says. You see, church reconciliation is God's work. And bringing division is the devil's work. And we must not take part in devil's work by in any way directly or indirectly we must keep ourselves away completely from the devil's work but some people are troublemakers by nature so be careful about whom you go to when there's a conflict instead of bringing peace some people add more fire to the conflict so you got to be very careful because not all are peacemakers you getting me so we got to be careful as to whom we go to and we got to make sure that we ourselves are getting transformed into peacemakers. God grants grace to some people to bring peace between two people or two groups. There are some who are gifted. Now all of us are called to be peacemakers, but all of us may not be gifted in that, in the way we are supposed to be. We're all growing in that, but God gives grace to some people. And these people, these peacemakers build bridges. That's their job. They build bridges. And God's favor is on those who bring peace, not on those who bring divisions. Sometimes reconciliation includes confronting people's sins. You know, the Lord explains this whole process in Matthew 18, 15 to 17. And uh, if somebody commits a sin, the Lord says, go and speak to that person. If he doesn't listen, take two or three elders. If he still doesn't listen, tell, tell it to the church. And if he still doesn't listen, treat him as an unbeliever. Basically, you know, he says, excommunicate him from the church. Unfortunately, many people short circuit this process. Instead of going and speaking to the person directly, they speak to 10 different people and it becomes a mess. Psalm 34.14 says that we must seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. That's what we are called to do as God's people. But some people don't confront sin as they don't want to take the trouble of dealing with sin. But if you keep quiet about someone's sin, that person may sin against others too. As Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, 6, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So church, how can we become better peacemakers? Peacemakers must be patient because it takes time to resolve conflicts. Humans are very complex beings. 
things don't get solved in a day so peak peacemakers as god's people we are all called to be peacemakers and we got to be patient galatians 6:9 says and let us not grow weary let us not grow tired of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up also peacemakers must be must be good listeners james chapter 1 verse 19 says you know be slow to speak and quick to listen and we always go on the other way around we are quick to speak and slow to listen right so peacemakers must be good must be good listeners they should not jump to conclusions they should take time to listen they should take time to hear both sides of the stories and then use discernment because if you listen to only one side you will get a skewed understanding of the whole issue and communication is not just about words it includes body language and our tone as well in my homiletics classes that's what i keep telling students you know what you say verbally is not enough you know the your body language your eye contact all those things matter your dress so peacemakers must choose their communication both verbal communication and non verbal communication carefully proverbs 15:1 says a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger when we speak harshly there are flames going up so we got to be careful proverbs 29:20 says Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope. There is more hope for a fool than for him. You know, there are some who say something in haste and then think later about what they said. You know, Peter, Apostle Peter was one such person by the way. But the Bible says, you know, if we are hasty in our in our words, it's dangerous. You are going to mess up things. be slow to speak also peacemakers must control their anger you know again i have seen situations where two people are quarreling and the peacemaker you know or the person who is asked to make peace he has more anger than these two people and he creates a bigger mess than what the mess was already right That's why you know peacemakers must control their anger. Proverbs 15:18 says a hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Proverbs 29:22. Proverbs there are a lot of proverbs you know which talk about you know all these aspects in terms of making peace and controlling anger and being walking in wisdom. Proverbs 29:22 says a man of wrath stirs up strife and one given to anger causes much transgression a person who is angry causes many sins so we have to make peace between people we are called to be peacemakers between people we are called to make peace between people So God favors the peacemakers those who reconcile people to God by sharing the gospel and God also favors those who make peace among people The second and final truth from this passage is the peacemakers will be called sons of God hallelujah that's a promise the peacemakers will be called sons of God blessed are the peacemakers why are they blessed he gives a reason for for they shall be called sons of god in the old testament israel is referred to as sons for example in deuteronomy 14:1 in hosea chapter 1 verse 10 the righteous god promises the righteous would be called children of the living god on the day of judgment before the nations But here 
those who make peace are called sons of god you know when we make peace and reconciliation we imitate god that's why we are called sons of god because god is a peacemaker as we saw right so when we make peace we are imitating a god god's children act like him in hebrew thought the word sons refers to those who strongly reflect the character of another you know when you for example uh, in the early church there was a man by the name joseph do you know the nickname that was given to him in acts 4 you will find that anybody yeah what what is this uh, you know what is the meaning of barnabas it means son of encouragement i mean is uh, did they give the name because his father was encouraging no son of encouragement means you know that's a hebrew thought in hebrew thought son of means you know he or she possesses that particular character right so when it says son of encouragement that he that means he is an encouraging person so when the bible says blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called sons of god it means that we are acting like god we are behaving like god we are imitating god when we are peacemakers hallelujah we talk about being christ like god like one of the ways that we can do is to make peace not bring divisions when we make peace we demonstrate god's nature and when we make peace we are doing god's work this is god's work not just preaching from the pulpit when we make peace we are doing god's work and uh, the phrase shall be called in this passage is a continuous future passive in other words we will be called sons of god for all eternity it's a it's a continuous thing future continuous tense you know god keeps calling us as sons of god again the word called they will be called is passive which suggests that god himself will call the peacemakers sons of god god will tell these peacemakers you're just like me you have done peace like me you have made peace like me and god will commend them congratulate them appreciate them for their work so church the bible says that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god now if you look at that passage the other way if you are not a peacemaker you are probably not a true believer because you know peacemakers are children of god if you're not a peacemaker you're probably not a true believer or you're a disobedient believer because peacemakers are sons of god god's children make peace if you're not making peace you're being disobedient those who are truly born again will definitely be peacemakers that's the characteristic of god's people praise the lord hallelujah the church the bible says over here the second truth that we can learn from this passage is the peacemakers will be called sons of god sons of god it's a greater title than any other title that the world can give amen how many of you want to be sons of god amen praise the lord if i have to encapsulate this entire sermon summarize this whole sermon in one sentence this is it imitate god by being a peacemaker that's what god is calling us to do today imitate god by being a peace maker when you and i make peace between people and god by sharing the gospel we are imitating god when you and i you know reconcile people to one another we are being peacemakers we are imitating god one person wrote a book entitled bringing home the prodigals and he says that more people leave churches because of small issues than important ones he said he says that people don't leave churches because of big doctrinal issues no people argue over different types of buildings different styles of worship youth work and you know small small things the color of the curtain and so on 
that's that's pretty strange but that's true according to a survey which included 500 people uh, in this survey they found out that 74 percent of respondents thought that people had left the church because of disagreements with other church members 74 percent of the people left the church because they disagreed with the other members and unfortunately the pastors have to take the brunt of all that pain when a member loses when a member leaves the church church fights I believe are the worst fights because we profess to believe in unity and love among believers but we don't practice them you know political fights yes we understand Street fights, we understand. But church fights, shameful. Shameful because we are called to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We talk about love, but unfortunately don't practice it. And as I was preparing this sermon this week, my prayer has been that every member of EAGC will be a peacemaker. Imagine that if every one of us will be a peacemaker, you know, we will flourish, we will do great things for God. Amen. Hallelujah. When we are peacemakers, you know, nobody has a chance to leave the church. Instead, many more people will be added to the church and eventually to the kingdom of God. Church, please understand this is very serious. You know, Jesus gave his very life. He gave his very life so that we can be reconciled to God and to one another. Being peacemakers or having peace is not a mere add-on which looks good if you have it and it's okay if you don't have it. No, it's not like that. This is a must. This is important. This is absolutely vital and crucial because our Lord gave his very life on the cross so that we will be united to God and to one another. Our God is a peacemaker. And let's imitate God by being peacemakers. Shall we all stand to our feet and respond to God's word this morning? Shall we all stand to our feet?